Hello everyone. So in this video, I will continue problem 13.21 that I was doing in the previous video. So uh, in the previous part, we gathered as much informa information as we could from the, uh, the timing diagram. Now I have to transfer this information that I gathered here in this table into a um, transition table. And after that, we have to draw the state graph. All right. So let's do that together. So what we need here in the transition table is that we know that we have a present state. So we'll have a present state. We are going to have the next state which is Q1 plus and Q2 plus, right? And we know that it is depending on the X as well. Then we are going to have the output, which is also depending on the input. All right. Okay. So how many present states, how many states do I have? So my Q1, Q2, because this present state is basically Q1, Q2. Right? So Q1, Q2 is either 0, 0, or 0, 1, or 1, 0, or 1, 1. Right? All right. So let's go and um, fill in this table. So whenever we have Q0, Q1, Q2 equal to 0, 0, which is this case over here, this case over here, and this case over here. So during this um, transition to the, I mean, the trend during this um, transition into the transition table from this information gathered up there, you may see <clears throat> some states are repeating. Okay, so it doesn't matter. That's okay. Uh, I'll let you know whenever we reach such a, such a point. All right, so the first one that Q1, Q2 is equal to 0, 0. We know that when X is equal to 0, Z is equal to 1, right? And then Q1, Q, Q1 plus and Q2 plus for X equal to zero is zero, one. So now I have to go to other Q1, Q2s that are equal to zero, zero in order to find the, to fill the rest of this table. Okay, so for example, in clock cycle number five, you can see that Q1, Q2 is zero, zero. So it is related to this row of my table. Again, for x, x equal to 0, I have z equal to 0 here. For x equal to 1. So actually, um, let me check something over here. Yeah, so in the clock uh, cycle number 5, as you can see, our x was equal to 1 here. All right, so this was an error in the previous video. All right? Okay, so again, for see, this is also a way to check and see if you are on the right page, okay? All right, so for x equal to 1, z is equal to 0. So I can fill this part, and then I see that when x is equal to 1, here I'm in this row, I'm looking at this row, when x is equal to 1, q1 plus q2 plus is equal to 1 and 0. Okay, so I have filled out this row of my transition table. And let's look at the last one that I have for Q1, Q2 equal to um, 0. So basically, whatever I have here, I would have uh, filled it already because Q1, Q2 is 0, 0. I, the only information that I could get was X equal to 0, Z equal to 1. So X equal to 0, Z equal to 1, right? All right. So let's move on to <clears throat> the next state of my transition table. So the next state is when Q1, Q2 is equal to 0, 1. So Q1, Q2 is equal to 0, 1. It is this one, any other one, um, and this one, right? So let's look at both of them. First, first one. So I'm looking at clock cycle number 2. So Q1, Q2 is 0, 1. When x is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. When x is equal to 1, z is equal to 1. And my next state is 1, 1. Now, what was that 1, 1 for? It was when x was equal to 
1, right? So we had 1, 1 here. Now I look at the second one, which is clock cycle number 8. So x1, z1, I already have that information here. x0, z0, I already have that information. And now for x equal to 0, I see that the next state is 0, 0. All right, so this is why you have, um, sometimes you have some more information for the same present state in other clock cycles. <clears throat> so you can fill in this transition table completely. Now, next one is when <clears throat> Q1, Q2 is equal to 1, 1. We tried these two. Okay, so first we'll look at the first one, which is clock cycle 3. So Q1, Q2 is equal to 1, 1. When x is equal to 1, z is equal to 1. When x is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. And q1 plus q2 plus is 1, 0 for when? For when x is equal to 0. Why am I saying for when x is equal to 0? Because the last um, value that x had in this cycle over here was x equal to 0, right? So the next the state of the flip-flop is happening when this x is equal to 0. All right? Okay. So I still need one information, some more information. So if I look at clock cycle number 7, I have Q1, Q2 equal to 1, 1. So for x0 and x1, I have the values for z. And then Q1 plus Q2 plus when x is equal to 1 is equal, or, uh, or equal to 0, 1. Okay? So I'm left with one more uh, present state, which is Q1, Q2 equal to 1, 0. Okay, so let's look at the clock cycle number 4 first. So Q1, Q2 are equal to 1, 0. When X is 0, you see that Z is 1. When X is 1, Z is 0, right? And then for the next state, when X is 1, we have... Q1 plus Q2 plus equal to 0, 0. And then if I look at the second one, which is clock cycle number 6, I have for when X is equal to 0, my next state is equal to 1, 1. All right? Okay, so this is how we transferred this information gathered in the previous video and in this table to the transition table. Now what I have to do is to draw the state graph based on this transition table. Okay, so I'm going to draw my states, my state 0, 0, my state 0, 1, state 1, 0, and state 1, 1. So sometimes you will name these states as S0, S1, S2, and S3. Now, in this video, I just didn't do that. I only write my states as they are. Okay, so one by one, we are at the first row at this table. So 0, 0. When x is equal to 0, what would be my next state? So I will go to 0, 1. This is when x is equal to 0. What is the output when x is equal to 0? It is 1. So you remember that x over z was what I am writing on these arcs. Now, when I'm at the same state, I'm at 0, 0, and x is equal to 1, what would be the next state? It is 1, 0, right? So if I have x equal to 1, I will go to 1, 0, and the output is equal to 0, right? Okay, so I will write for each state um, with a different color so you can distinguish them. So I'm in the second row. I'm at 0, 1. So when I'm at 0, 1, when x is equal to 0, where I would go? I would go back to the first state. 0, and what is the output here? 0, right? Again, when I'm at 0, 1, and x is equal to 1, I'm going to 1, 1. And what is the output here? It is 1, right? So the next one, which is row number 3. So in row number 3, I'm at 1, 0, state 1, 0. When x is equal to 0, I'm going to 1, 1. So when x is equal to 0, I'm going to 1, 1. And when x is equal to 0, z is equal to 1. So I'm just, um, these circles that I'm 
just drawing over this is just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, you don't have to draw this circle. And when I'm at one zero and x is equal to one, I'll go back to state zero zero. Right? So when I'm at zero and x is equal to one, I will go back to <clears throat> state zero zero. And when x is equal to one, z is equal to zero. Right? So the last row is the last one that I have to define or draw in the state graph. So when we are at state one, one, and x is equal to zero, we'll go to state one, zero, right? So when x is equal to zero, we'll go to state one, zero, and the output here is equal to zero, which is this one. So at, we are at the same state, and um, x is equal to one, so we'll go back to zero, one, over here, and the output here is equal to one. All right, so I have drawn the state graph with respect to this transition table. Okay, so this was how we went through the timing diagram. We gathered all the information, we draw the transition table, and at the end we draw the state graph. All right, all right, so I hope these two videos help you to find out uh, to understand how to gather as much information as you can from the timing diagram and do whatever the question is asking you for. Um, please leave, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.